All right, what's up, everyone? Thank you for joining me for yet again another episode of the Chris Gates Fitness Podcast. I am Chris Gates. I appreciate you joining me. Today, we're going to talk about tips for training in the morning because oftentimes we will have a change in schedule that may lead us to have to train at a different time of day than we would typically prefer. Um, And I thought it's a good opportunity now to address that here at the beginning of the year uh, for when this eventually happens to you. So tips and strategies we can put in place uh, for dealing with moving your training session from maybe lunchtime or after work to early in the morning. Uh, It tends to be a time that people don't really enjoy or prefer to uh, train during. I know I can speak to that uh, myself, but we're going to dive in and try and make it as enjoyable as we possibly can. Before we do that, I want to start with another one of those um, topics that uh, can kick off the episode just that have been on my mind lately. And since we're here at the beginning of the year, I've been thinking a lot about you know, people setting goals and trying to achieve certain things that they want to do with their fitness and nutrition and health. And that's what comes with this time of year, right? We're we're setting New Year's resolutions and trying to have, you know, it be a new year and a new me. And I love that. I think it's great. Some people will mock it. I think now is the perfect time for you to try and do something that's going to better yourself. And I will say that next month and next month and the month after that, it's always right now is the best time for you to start doing that. So uh, with that being the case, uh, I've been thinking about, you know, the reason why these goals, these New Year's resolutions fail for so many people. And I think it all comes back to the idea of consistency. Are you being consistent and are you approaching your goal in a way that makes sense and doing that on a consistent basis? And unfortunately, what people seem to struggle with the most is just being able to be consistent. So uh, my challenge to you right now, from the time that you're listening to this episode, my challenge to you is to be consistent from today until Valentine's Day. And that's not that long of a period of time. It's a little bit over a month. But I want you to be consistent from now until Valentine's Day because if you can set Valentine's Day as that point on the calendar where you're going to do everything you can to be as consistent as you possibly can and keep your goal at the forefront of your mind and your actions, if you can do it until Valentine's Day, I guarantee you, I promise you that you're going to see progress. You're going to find success. And I I promise you that if you can make it to Valentine's Day with that progress, you're not going to want to stop on Valentine's Day. And I think it's really something that can catapult you into a much better year. After the year that 2020 was, we all want 2021 to be a much better year. Um, So that's my challenge to you. My challenge to you is to be as consistent as you possibly can be from today until Valentine's Day in pursuing your goal. Now, that does not mean you need to be perfect on a daily basis. That would be ridiculous. I don't expect you to be perfect. You shouldn't expect yourself to be perfect, but you should be able to set a goal. You should be able to outline a plan that's going to work you towards that goal. And then you should be able to try to be as consistent as you possibly can. And consistency does not mean, like I said, you're perfect. Consistency means that Despite what life throws at you, you keep that goal at the forefront of your mind. And if you have a day where you can't train, or if you have a day where your diet goes completely to shit, you get back on the plan the very next day. You don't abandon everything because you had a bad day or because you had a bad experience or something got in the way. You don't abandon it because you had a bad day or two or three. You don't abandon it because you had a bad week. You keep that goal at the forefront of your mind, you commit to it, and you do your best to be as consistent as you possibly can. That's what consistency means. And anybody that wants to achieve a health or fitness goal has to understand, you have to understand, that it's going to take consistency over a long period of time to do what you want to do, to achieve what you want to achieve. And I think this is a great opportunity. So Valentine's Day, that's the challenge. Be as consistent as you possibly can. From today until Valentine's Day, 
I promise you, you're going to see results. And with that, let's dive into the topic of the day. So like I said at the beginning of the episode, it is tips for training in the morning. And I kind of got into it there at the beginning. Most people hate training in the morning. If you like it, congratulations. You can stop this episode right now and go listen to another podcast or something else because you've done it. You've done the thing that none of us actually want to do. You have developed the superhuman strength that allows you to wake up at four in the morning and roll right into a workout. Most of us hate that. (laughs) Most of us don't enjoy that at all. And that's why a podcast like this is so helpful and important tips for training in the morning because we don't want to do it, but you understand the importance of training and you understand that it benefits your health to, if you have a bunch of meetings lined up for one day and the only chance you have is to train early in the morning, you understand the importance of it and you get your butt in the gym and you train, uh, or at least hopefully you do. If you don't, these tips should come in handy if uh, if and when that happens for you. And it, it happens to all of us, right? Things get in the way. Every day is not the same. Although <laughs> in, in this 2020 COVID, now 2021 quarantine-ish life, uh, days are strikingly similar to each other. But generally speaking, over the course of our lives, the days aren't going to be the same. So we need to find a way to read, react, and still get our workouts in, still do the things that make us feel good, feel healthy, feel active. Um, And that's what we're going to talk about on this episode of the podcast. So let's dive into some research evidence that is pretty interesting as it pertains to what training in the morning does to us. So how it affects our performance. And I think we can break these into two categories. We can start with strength training. So if you go into the gym just specifically to lift weights and get stronger, that's the first category. And the second category can be volume or endurance training. And this can kind of span both weightlifting and other types of fitness. So if you go into the gym purely to do cardio, uh, you would be in this second group, endurance training or cardiovascular workouts, you know, like boot camp classes, uh, any other fitness, the spin classes, stuff like that. And then volume is, you know, if you're going into the gym because you're trying to perform as many sets and reps as possible for the different exercises, typically that's because you want to build muscle. You're going to work your training volume up over time. So there's just a a larger amount of work that you do when you're focusing on volume or endurance as opposed to strength training. Uh, So let's start with strength training first. And uh, we know from a lot of the research that on average, Um, for both building muscle and building strength, actually, the performance over the long term is, is largely unaffected based on the time that you have to train. And that's because at the end of the day, you know, if you have to train on an individual day in the morning, occasionally, or even if you have to make the switch to training in the morning permanently, your, your progress is going to be relative to your progress. So If you work out in the afternoon or the evening all the time, and then you're forced to go train in the morning, if it's just once, that one training session is not going to have a huge impact on your progress. It's just not. It's all about stacking training sessions, right? We know that any type of progress, talked about at the beginning of the episode, consistency, any type of progress that you can make is based on stacking workouts over and over and over again. And that applies here. So... One individual session is not going to mess with your progress uh, really at all. And also, if you have to train permanently early in the morning, it's not going to affect your progress either because that's just when you train. So every session that you have, every workout that you do, the progress that you make is just relative to the previous workout that you had. So uh, if you're worried about when these instances come out or when these changes come in your training schedule... If you're worried about that affecting your progress, you can take a deep breath. It's not that big of a deal. If your only thing, if your only option is to train first thing in the morning, it, you're going to be okay. Uh, your body will adjust. Your progress will be just like training at any other time. Uh, potential negative outcomes maybe surface for those sessions that happen once in a while. Maybe it's that one day of the week that you have to train early, and within that session you see that your progress 
maybe stalls or declines a little bit. So for instance, if you have a, a workout that's centered around the bench press and you're doing, let's just go do generic. You're doing a five by five on the bench, right? And you're trying to push as much weight in those sets as you can. If you normally train at lunchtime, but you're forced to train in the morning one day for that workout, as compared to the the last time that you did that five by five bench workout, you may see in that that morning workout that your performance declines relative to the previous workout. But that's just for that day. It doesn't mean that your progress has totally derailed. Um, you'll see that as you get in the gym again the next week for that same session, if you're back at your normal training time, your progress is probably going to fall right in line with where it was before. Um, or if you have to train in the morning, it's going to be relative to that training session you had the previous week that was in the morning. So individually, in individual sessions, you can see performance declines. But like I said, it's always going to be relative to the time that you train and what you've done previously. So for volume uh, and or endurance training, if your training is geared toward building muscle, which would be higher volumes, like we mentioned before, or endurance training, uh, performance may not be affected all that much. It, it, the research really seems to indicate that your mood for this style of training plays a really big role. So volume workouts, when you're building muscle, they can be long. They can take a long time. Uh, endurance training can take a long time if you're going for long runs or long spin sessions or whatever it may be. And really, it, your mood affects you in those situations because if you just show up and have a shitty mood and you're not happy to be there, as that workout goes on, your mood is going to play a big role in terms of how your performance goes throughout the workout. So you may start the workout, really not be all that happy to be there, but you're still getting the reps in. But if if you're in that bad mood, you have less of an inclination to train or train hard as that session goes on, some of the research suggests that your performance kind of tails off the longer the session goes. So accumulating training volume, doing longer workouts like running with higher energy needs uh, could p potentially see performance declines if you switch to morning training. So uh, to summarize, research suggests morning training is pretty much just like any other training. You may, in individual situations when your schedule changes, you may see performance drop off. That could be because of mood. That be, could be because of the change in time. But overall, your progress is going to continue to progress. These are just individual circumstances where you may not get the performance that you're accustomed to or maybe that you're happy with. So in terms of coaching cues, uh, you know, I can speak from experience on this topic. Over the course of my career, since I graduated college, work has changed for me. I started out working in the mornings, which meant that I trained after work. I then went to a different job where I actually started my workday at noon, which meant that I could train in the morning. So I switched from that after work to the morning. And now in the role that I'm in, I train on my lunch break. Uh, training on my lunch break has turned out to be the most the most effective, the best for my performance in the gym. And I think that's because it's really kind of your sweet spot, right? You've, you've had breakfast, uh, you've had probably some caffeine, you are up and moving around, your body's not stiff like it would be if you just wake up at the beginning of the day and you're not how you often feel after work. You're not fatigued from the workday, stressed from the workday, demotivated because of the workday. So I really find lunch to be the best time possible to train. And um, I've gone through that undulation of training at different times. So I've felt those those mood impacts and those performance declines because the, the training schedule changes. But overall, what I've seen is that progress really falls in line with progress. And if you're doing things the right way, if you're focusing on all the right things in the gym and with your nutrition and your recovery, you're going to be perfectly fine. Things are going to move in the direction that they should. But if you have to move consistently to morning training, consistency is going to be your best friend. Uh, the initial change will be difficult from whenever you were training to now training in the morning. There's no getting past that. But 
if you could simply just continue to show up to the gym, show up and continue to do your workouts or get out there and run or whatever you're doing, your progress is going to come back to baseline. You're going to see that that switch maybe causes a performance decline, but then you build up from that new baseline that you have. So um, something that you could potentially do is if you're lifting, you know, scale things back because you know that this change is going to happen in your schedule. So don't go into the gym on that first day when you have to train in the morning and expect you're going to lift the same sets, reps, weight for everything, or you're going to go out and run the same time for the same mileage. Maybe you shouldn't expect that. Adjust your expectations a little bit. Plan that maybe you need to knock 10% off of the load that you do your squat with or your bench press with, or maybe uh, you adjust your endurance training plan to have a introductory week and you scale the intensity and uh, you scale that back and and you're not as focused on time uh, or pace as you are just getting the workouts done. Uh, And then you can recalibrate and see what you did in that week and see where you can build up from there. Uh, You don't really need to overcomplicate things, but just understand that taking one step back now can really potentially help you take two steps forward in the future. Uh, Those two steps forward that you would have taken when you were training at another time, uh, it just maybe will take an extra few weeks to get there. Now, if you're training occasionally in the morning, we can approach this a little bit of a different way. So say you have one of those days where the meetings are just stacked on top of each other throughout the day. The only time that you can train is first thing in the morning because you know, hey, if I wait till after work, I'm going to feel like crap. I'm not going to want to do it. So let's not even try and do that. If you have to have that occasional training uh, schedule change, What you can do is if you know it ahead of time, look at the workouts that you have planned for the week and find that one, that one or two that are less intense than the others. And again, I can speak from experience on this. My my squat day is really intense. Uh, I feel pretty beat up and trashed after that lower body day. It just is the way it is. Uh, So I would never put a lower body day on that day where my training schedule changes. But I do have uh, a pull day where I'm focusing on back and biceps. It's really kind of just a a fun workout, a pump workout to go through. Uh, You're lifting some weight, you're getting a pump, and and that's that's the goal for that day. That one's not very intense. It's not very hard for me to get through that workout. That's probably a good candidate for me to put on the day of my 4 a.m. training session because I have a crazy-ass work day the rest of the day. These are the types of things you can think about ahead of time, plan for this change, and logically restructure your training in a way that makes sense. You don't, we we get so stuck in a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, seven day week schedule. And understandably so, that's how our lives operate. But your body doesn't know what day it is. Your body just knows what you introduce to it. So you can take all these pieces, all these days, these training sessions are pieces to a puzzle in the week. And you can move them around if you have to. You could do it in a way that's logical so you're not you know, crushing the same muscle group two days in a row, but you could move that pull day that I mentioned up to whatever day it is that you have to train in the morning and switch something else out and move some other pieces around so that you could still have a week that hits every target on your schedule but also set you up for success to do it as efficiently, effectively as you possibly can. Move those puzzle puzzle pieces around, do it in a way that makes sense and keep moving forward. Those are my general recommendations for training in the morning. In terms of mood, that's up to you, man. Like you, you, you have to put on a smiling face and be happy that you're still working towards your goals. You're still being healthy. You're still getting in the gym, moving around and doing your body good. It's up to you to, to, to put a smile on your face, get in the gym and do the things that you have to do. Nobody can help you be in a good mood except for you. So that one is on you, but the actual scheduling, setting yourself up for success, hitting those training goals that you have, you can do that by just proper planning. And I think that's the way to approach it. So I hope this helped for figuring out what to best do when you train in the morning. And um, 
I hope it doesn't happen to you a ton because like I said, uh, training in the morning is not a whole hell of a lot of fun, at least from my experience. I don't really enjoy it. Most people don't. Most people that I talk to do not enjoy training first thing in the morning, but uh, these tips will hopefully help help you if and when that should happen to you. So thank you for listening. As always, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, We will be back with you next week for another episode. And there's a lot of good stuff planned for the podcast this year. I am very, very, very excited for things to come with the podcast this year. Lots of interviews, lots of new content. Uh, So that's all coming your way sooner rather than later. All right. Thank you all. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you again soon. See ya.